Hi, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for your time. I'm uh, sorry that I didn't realize that uh, when I upload a video straight to YouTube that the quality is lower and that YouTube does it automatically. Uh, transcribe it to high definition so now I realize I have to put all my videos in a video editor to get um, high quality so I will try to do that from now on but this week's um, book chapter overview are the hidden dangers of protein energy mal malnutrition this is a type of malnutrition I see all the time, and it's something that used to be um, quite common in third world countries, but now, unfortunately, I see it in many types of people, including vegans, and um, I can even see it in obese people, believe it or not. And you can tell this clearly because their teeth are malformed, their bones are changing. Um, you can literally see their physical features changing before your eyes. Unfortunately, uh, there are some celebrity vegans who have actually died from these conditions. But as I said, this is something that used to only be seen in severe types of malnutrition in third world countries or when a country was undergoing a um, famine or other types of malnutrition such as during wartime. So the types of protein malnutrition are quashioricor, which is protein malnutrition dominant, marasmus, which is deficient calorie intake, and marasmic quashioricor, marked protein deficiency and marked calorie, calorie insufficiency, which is the most severe form protein calorie, protein and caloric malnutrition. Protein energy malnutrition can have significant lifelong effects. Protein malnutrition is detrimental at any point in life, but prenatally it can have significant lifelong effects. Diets that consist of less than 10% protein in utero have been linked with many brain deficits, including decreased brain weight and impaired communication within the brain. Even mild protein malnutrition has been shown to have lasting significant effects, including decreased brain size with impaired neocortical plasticity, decreased sperm quality, low birth weight, decreased cardiac energy, T cell depletion, oxidative stress, and increased passive stiffness in skeletal muscles. The most common comorbid conditions are diarrhea and malaria, but a variety have been noted, including sepsis, severe anemia, pneumonia, tuberculosis, scabies, chronic ear infection, rickets, and keratomalacia. Keratomalacia, <clears throat> keratin, related to keratin. Formation associated malnutrition deficiencies are scurvy, beriberi, pellagra, rickets, vitamin A, E, and K deficiency, and mineral deficiencies. In addition, when humans try to eat like other primates, they cannot extract enough calories to live healthily. Up to 50% of women who exclusively eat raw foods develop a lack of menstruation, a sign the body does not have enough energy to support a pregnancy. So protein energy malnutrition is extremely detrimental. And one of the things that you can use to 
boost your protein is whey protein, which is the um, especially acid whey protein. However, all of the proteins in milk have benefits. This is one of the reasons why they use milk exclusively and today almost exclusively to um, rapidly bring people out of starvation mode. So um, milk and whey proteins have different biological and functional properties. The typical composition of milk comprises of about 3% I can hear. The typical composition of milk comprises about 3% protein, out of which casein predominates at approximately 80%, and the remaining 20% are whey proteins. Whey proteins are unique, superior proteins with many health benefits. Whey proteins are rapidly absorbed. Whey proteins decrease inflammation as compared to casein. Whey protein benefits the microbiota. Acid whey activates central nervous system macrophages. Milk whey protein combats iron overload, oxidative stress, and DNA damage. Whey protein actually reverses iron overload induced DNA damage in leukocytes and colonocytes. Whey protein increases lymphocyte glutathione in humans. Acid whey, this is the acid whey and the non-denatured. The non-denatured, not the acid whey, but the non-denatured whey protein. So you should always just try to get lightly pasteurized, regular pasteurized milk and not high heat process so that you can preserve um, those natural proteins. Acid whey reverses neurodegenerative and retina inflammation by activating CNS macrophages in the lipid fraction of whey. Free fatty acids specifically inhibit the germination of candida. The morpholo morphologic change associated with pathogenicity. <clears throat> Whey, whey proteins benefit the gastro system and promote healing. Whey proteins exert a therapeutic effect on the gastric mucosa. This effect is due to the presence of the sulfide, sulfidal group in amino acid cysteine and its linkage with glutamic acid in the production of glutathione. Wound healing involves the growth of new skin. Through the use of proteins in their amino acids, the healing process is delayed when there are inadequate amounts of protein or diets high in poor quality proteins, such as gelatin, are present. Whey proteins provide good quality proteins. Now, I'm not against gelatin, but whey proteins are superior. I'm also not against eating meat. I'm also not against any um, <clears throat> diet that includes good proteins. <clears throat> so that is just a little bit of what you'll find in Chapter 2 of Immune for Life, which hopefully will be coming soon as an e-book. Whey proteins increase lymphocyte glutathione and the oral administration of substantial, substan substantive amounts of bovine whey protein enhance glutathione content in the liver, heart, and spleen. This change is moderate but sustained over time and biologically significant. And as I said, this, protein, this property is restricted to the undenatured conformation of whey proteins, and your best source of that is for those undenatured whey proteins are bovine colostrum.
because it is the least denatured form of mammal milk. And a close second would be whole fat, regular pasteurized mammal milk that is not high heat processed in any way. So, okay, that's it for this week. I hope to see you on a more regular basis um, because I have been doing some things for my other job as of late and um, I've just been too busy doing that to keep up with this. But I hope to see you and um, go through each of these chapters. Remember, you can find this and a lot more on A Mean for Life. And as I said, coming, the ebook will be coming soon. So thanks for your time, everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye.